Romans chapter 1 verse 24. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their woman exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. If you look here, it talks about the natural use of the man and the woman as a married couple. It says the natural use. When a man and a woman are united as a married couple, a family is formed. The relationship between that husband and wife is one that is according to the natural use. In that case, what is the unnatural use? It is against the natural use for a husband to set aside his wife and form a sexual relationship with another woman. It is also against the natural use for wife to set her husband aside and form a sexual relationship with another man. God established the institution of the family so that a man and a woman might have a natural relationship with each other as a married couple and thus maintain order in the family. God's aim in creating man was to form a recipient for his love. God also created things so that man would also have his partner in love. But people go about destroying this natural order. When it comes to crimes caused by juvenile delinquents, the offenders come from homes in which the parents don't have a proper relationship with each other. This is an extremely important problem. The order in the family is broken down because the relationship is not what it should be. Because people are so self-centered these days, even though they may love each other when they first get married, once they have been living together for a while, they find their personalities are not compatible. How can two personalities match perfectly? We're talking about a man and a woman. They can't possibly be the same. Even though a husband and wife may have different personalities, they must learn to get along with each other through patience and tolerance. This is what makes a family and a marriage. It's when these relationships become unnatural and unhealthy that they become sinful. They give rise to many a sin. And then what happens? Let's read on. In verse 27 it says, Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful. What is this talking about? It's homosexuality. Two men having a sexual relationship with each other. So if you look here it says, receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Among the sins, homosexuality is a sin for which a person is punished directly. The commandment that brings a direct blessing is the commandment to honor your father and your mother. And the sin that results in a direct punishment is the sin of homosexual indulgence, either between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. You need to know this. God's word is never wrong. These words may have been recorded 2,000 years ago, but this terrible sin is now very evident in our world today. This is what it says in the Bible, but they choose to completely ignore the Bible. If things have gone this far, there isn't much time left for this world, is there? In some countries, adultery is no longer a crime. And now the churches are accepting homosexuality and don't consider it a sin. Now look at verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Look what it says here. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Doesn't it sound rather strange? To retain God in their knowledge. Probably many of you have lived your lives until now without even thinking about doing this. What does it mean to retain God in your knowledge? Whatever it is you love, that's what you retain in your knowledge. If a woman by the name of Miss Smith is in love with Mr. Jones, she will always be thinking about him. She will think about him when she is at home. She will think about him when she's at work. She'll think about him when she sees other young men as she's walking along the street. 
she will always retain Mr. Jones in her knowledge or in her mind. Why is that? It's because she loves him. And then there are people who are in love with money. All they think about all the time is money. Whether they are awake or asleep, money is all they think about. They see everything in terms of money. And because they love money, that's all there is in their hearts. And since they don't love God, they do not retain Him in their knowledge. Matthew chapter 22 verse 34 But when the Pharisees heard that He had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked Him a question, testing Him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Look what it says here. There are ten commandments. But if we put these into two main categories, the first would be, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. How can a person love God with all his heart, all his soul, and all his mind? I think of this as being out of reach for us to even think about, let alone abide by. I said that true happiness comes from obtaining whatever it is that you love the most. Think about it this way. Suppose you had someone you loved so much that you would be prepared to give your life for that person. In that case, would you be happy or not? Suppose you have someone for whom you are willing to give your entire life without any reservations whatsoever. You have met that person and you are both together now. Then you would be the happiest person in the world. But suppose that person you loved was God. If that person you loved so much you were willing to give your life for him was God, would you not be happy? You would be extremely happy. So one of God's reasons and his aim in creating man was in order that he might be loved by man. From God's perspective, he just wants to love man unconditionally and he wants man to know his love and love him in return. He wants there to be a relationship of perfect love between himself and man, a love that is ready to sacrifice everything. This is the special privilege that has been given to man. It is a special privilege to be able to love God with all your life. It is something of which we should be extremely proud and about which we should be extremely happy. Who is God? He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who controls the history of mankind. He is the highest being, the God who is accomplishing the perfect eternal heavenly kingdom. If you were able to love this God with all your life, what more could you possibly need? But that's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because of sin. Why is it that you are not able to love God with all your being? It's because of sin. Why? Sin is afraid of God. God is holy. God has no sin. God is pure. God is glorious. As people who have sinned before God, how can we possibly love this God? We can't do it because of our sins. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Let's go on to verse 4. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Look what it says here. It says, in the last days, perilous times will come. This is talking about now. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. All that people know these days is themselves. Even a man and his wife think only of themselves. It's the same in the relationship between parents and children. The parents think only of themselves and so do the children. Why is this? How do we know this? Nowadays, people only think of themselves. Married couples too think only of themselves. So as soon as they find that they are incompatible, they just get divorced. They only think of themselves. This is the end times. These are the perilous times of the last days. That is why it talks about perilous times here. Next it says, lovers of money. If people are lovers of self, it is inevitable that money will come into the matter. People love money. So parents and children fight over money and husbands and wives fight over money. 
This is what has become of the world. Next it says, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Isn't that the way it is now? This is why people don't even think about retaining God in their knowledge. So, as you're listening to these words, you need to think, Oh yes, I am the one who refuses to retain God in my knowledge. This is me. This is what I've been doing all this time. The life I've been living until now has all been mistaken. God is the source of blessing, and God is the source of life. Everything comes from God. But I've been living my life until now disregarding God, and I have not retained Him in my heart. So how can I expect to receive any blessings or life or peace and happiness in my heart? One day, 30 years ago, God came into my heart. From that day on, God has been in my heart. Shortly after I was saved, I went through a lot of hardships. But I didn't feel any uneasiness in my heart, and neither did I have any complaints. Why was that? Because once I had God in my heart, I was happy. This could not be changed for anything in this world. Once you discover this truth in the course of your life, you'll find that it holds you with its subtle charm.